Hello there, my name is Neil Sutherland and I'm going to be talking to you today about your HEA, your Higher Education Academy qualification. And you're here because you're thinking of applying either for the Associate Fellow or the Fellowship Criteria. Associate Fellow is for those of you who are early on in your teaching careers and the Fellows are those who are more established. And what I'd like to talk to you about today is about why you should be applying for this, but also just going through a real quick start guide in terms of what you should download, what are the sorts of things that you can start preparing and how to make this as simple, quick and easy. Um, so there's gonna be a few tips and tricks, quick fire stuff, but remember that the ARENA team run loads of other sessions on this as well, and I'll be keeping you updated with them. The first thing is, before we delve into that, is that, Applying for this is becoming such a, an expectation, really, if you're looking at either a, a teaching based career or also a research based career that's likely to involve any sort of teaching. Um, having this HEA qualification is only going to stand you in good stead. So firstly, just really transactionally, it's something to put on your CV that puts a flag in the sand and says, I am interested in teaching and learning. So that's important transactionally. But even more so what it gives you is a narrative and what you'll be submitting is some documentation that will tell a story about you and your teaching practice and what you've done and what impact you've made. And the importance of this cannot be understated. And you ask anyone that's applied for the for their HEA qualifications and has then gone and interviewed afterwards and they performed so much better because they had their story and they could communicate why they were great at what they did. So let's delve into it a little bit more and see what you're going to have to do. So within your submission, conventionally in HEA submissions, there are three elements. Uh, we'll start with the easiest. The easiest are your advocate statements. So that's you get two individuals um, who, who already have HEA qualifications. You get two individuals to write you up a uh, uh, report a recommendation letter to support your application that in part corroborates what you've said in your application but it also gives them an opportunity to talk about how appropriate you are for this particular qualification so advocate statements nice and straightforward you're also going to submit a record of activities and this is a real quick fire um, overview of what it is that you've done within your most recent career in terms of your teaching practice, your core knowledge, your core values, your uh, assessment and feedback, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is that makes you you, there's kind of an annotated contents page. That's quite straightforward. The biggest part, the thing that's going to take you most time is your reflective account of practice. If you're going for your associate fellow, then you will be writing up a, uh, it's around 1400 words. If you're going for your fellow, it will be around 3000 words. And in this reflective account of practice, this is where you tell your story about who you are and what you do and what your teaching practice is like. So this is, uh, it, you, you divide it up however you want. And I'm gonna give you some tips in a moment of how you can actually go about doing that. But you divide it up how you want. But things to remember are, it's not a tick list glorified CV. It's not just a case of you saying, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. It's picking a few key stories. And we're gonna look at the, the marking rubric in a moment to, to help you find out what those stories are. But you're gonna pick a few key stories. You're going to be writing that in the first person and it's going to be reflective rather than it being descriptive. So the focus is on you talking about why you did something. What was the result of that and what did you learn from that? So the key is in reflection here, not just about here's something that I did, but here's why I did something and here's what came out of it as a result. So that's just to give you an impression of the, the feel of that reflective account of practice. But I'm sure you're wondering, what would I actually write about? Um, and in just a second, I will talk you through that exactly. Okay, so we are now looking at the UK professional standards framework. And this is something that the HEA have released. And this gives you some guidance in terms of what it is that you're actually gonna be submitting and what it will look like. So 
Uh, two things quickly to note is that to find this, you can go to the HEA website, or if you just want to straight Google it, uh, just type in Higher Education uh, Academy Professional Standards Framework, and uh, you'll be led to a page with this. Uh, you'll notice it says that it's from 2011. This is one that um, was most recently posted in 2019, and they're going through a review at the moment, but this is the, the, the most recent piece. Now, when you're looking at this document and other associated documents, it can look a little bit confusing in terms of like what to focus on and where to put your attention to. So I just want to give you a little rundown of, of what the most important bits are just to start off. And again, remembering that what I'm saying is just a supplement to everything that the ARENA team are already doing. So this is just kind of real, real quick tips. So we land here. Um, what I'd like you to do first is scroll down. We're going to ignore that for the moment. And I'd like you first, if you're interested in the associate fellow, I'd like you to scroll to page four. And if you're interested in the fellowship, I'd like you to scroll to page five. Now, these are called the descriptors. Uh, so we let's imagine the descriptors as though they're the, the umbrellas. So this is the real broad sense marking rubric. This is everything that your reflective account and your application, this is what it has to meet fundamentally. It's quite broad, so we're going to get some more granular detail in a moment, but it just helps us to understand um, some, some key points. So I'm going to look at the fellowship one to start with, and what this says here, we've got one, two, and three. Successful uh, engagement across the five areas of activity. So let's remember areas of activity, uh, appropriate knowledge and understanding across all aspects of core knowledge, core knowledge is an important one, and then commitment to professional values. So that's three terms that we're going to come back to to unpack. So we know we're going to have to write about those three things. And then also, if you're interested in fellowship, uh, you're going to have to show about appropriate teaching practices, incorporation of research, and con uh, continuing professional development. This is the, all the things that your reflective account have to uh, tick. So that gives us some more indication, a little bit more structuring in terms of what that reflective account is going to look like. But let's get into even more granular detail. You're not ready to start writing yet. Don't shoot from the hip and don't just say, oh, well, you know, it's going to be about teaching. I'm just going to write 3000 words about teaching. No, we can get even even more specific. So we know what our descriptor is asking us to do, um, and this tells us whether it's appropriate for you to do fellowship or uh, on this side, uh, whether you want to go for your associate fellow. And the, uh, the descriptors have slightly different uh, criteria. So now, after we've looked at page four or page five, now we can scroll back to page three. And page three gives you that really granular detail. You remember the terms areas of activity, core knowledge, professional values. Well. Here they all are. And here is exactly what the, uh, we're, we're being asked to look at. So when it says show uh, that you engage in all of these, so you have to show throughout your document that you design and plan learning activities. I, you know, you teach seminars and you, and you plan them. Uh, you teach and or support learning. That's why you're here as a, as a teaching assistant. Uh, you assess and give feedback. That can be summative feedback. I, you write feedback for students on their scripts. It can also be formative feedback that you have uh, discussions with students in the class um, and, and, and help to develop them as they go forward. Uh, you're developing effective learning environments and engaging in continual professional development. So you need to show throughout that document that you are exhibiting those areas of activity, A1 to A5. You're also showing about your uh, core knowledge. So this isn't just about saying, I teach, and here's how I teach. It's saying, here's what I teach, and here's how I get my ideas. These ideas that are core to me, core to, to my discipline, core to my area, here's how I get those ideas across. So this is the bit where you show you teach something, but you teach something specifically, and here's how you, you, you help students to understand that. So showing that you understand the subject um, material. And then also within that, it's showing that you've got the, the kind of the right processes for teaching and learning. Not just that you can do it, but you can do it within particular or with particular technologies, or you're able to evaluate your student learning through conversation, qualitative or quantitative means. Um, you understand student learning processes. You understand theories around active learning or threshold concepts or whatever it is. So knowledge, if, if areas of activity is really broad, knowledge is where we start getting more specific. 
And then professional values, B1 to B4, this is saying about why you teach. Why do you do what you do? And this is, for me, I've always found this to be a real centerpiece of the, of the reflective account. And this is that value when someone sits down with you in an interview and says, you know, tell me about what you do. You don't just say, here's something that I do in a classroom. You'd say, this is why I do that. This is why I'm doing this job. This is why I love this job. This is why I'm, this is why I'm good at what I do. So thinking about what is it that makes you you and what is it that makes you do the things that you do? Um, so evidence-informed approaches, um, promoting participation, thinking about inclusivity in the classroom, thinking about how do you create learning environments that allow learning to happen amongst your students. So my advice for starting off is not shoot from the hip. My advice for starting off is start with this page with A1 to A5, K1 to K6 and V1 to V4. And you sit down and you write just little bullet points about how you might answer each one. Now, the reflective account isn't just gonna be a bigger version of that. You're not just gonna to continue to write, uh, write about every one of those stories. What you'll hopefully notice is there is common themes that's coming up in what you do. Maybe that's a theme around inclusivity, or maybe that's a theme around relationship building or a theme around application of knowledge, whatever it is. There are going to be some common themes that come up in you thinking about A, K and V. So my recommendation, like any good research project, is you start with that really um, kind of inductive, iterative way of building something up, building a, building concepts up. Start by throwing everything wide open. What are all the stories that you can think of that relate to, relate to this marking criteria? All of them. Pick anything. Everything then start to condense it down, start to really concentrate that into thinking about, okay, are there like three or four big stories that I've got to tell? And that maybe those big stories could cut across an A, a K and a V. Maybe you're gonna tell about a particular um, class that you teach or a particular way that you supervise students. And in that way, you're not just saying, here's A over here, uh, K over here and V over here, you're actually showing how they how they mesh together. And remember that throughout your reflective account, you can also do some signposting work. So if you were going to say, I am going to talk about this particular learning environment in brackets, you can put A1, K3, B5. Um, so you can like, reference within your reference within your particular uh, account. So that would be my recommendation of starting off and understanding what is the descriptor page four and five, that umbrella, what is it that I'm actually looking to do? And then you get into here. And the real value of this, of page three, is that it constrains you. Um, it, it means you can't just talk about anything. You can't just talk about everything that relates to teaching. You have to talk about these aspects. And remember that you are going to be uh, evaluated against this. It's not just evaluated in a really holistic way. Yeah, they seem like they're pretty good at teaching. No, you're evaluated against this explicit set of criteria. So imagine like when you're marking a student's work, there is gonna be someone sitting here with a rubric that's got A1 to A5 with tick boxes and comment boxes next to it saying, has this person actually achieved these things? So coming back to the, 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 descript, uh, the dimensions often is the really, really, really important thing. Uh, and in the last part, I'll just give you some other little tips and reminders about what we've spoken about. OK, so we have spoken about your upcoming submission for your Higher Education Academy qualification. And you're either thinking of going for the Associate Fellow or the Fellowship Criteria. And just as a reminder of the key things that you're going to remember. Uh, the first one is that when you're submitting your work, this is not just an annotated CV. This is reflective. And as such, you need to be focusing on what it is that you've done, why you've done it, what came as a result of that, the impact of it, and what you learned as a result of that. Because it needs that depth and detail and richness, it's a good idea to not just talk about everything you've done in a real scattershot approach, but instead to pick some key learning moments or key, you know, the very important things that have happened to you across your career or really exemplify uh, your approach. The way that you find those very important things is that you go back to the, um, the particular dimensions. 
So the dimensions are A1 to A5, K1 to K6, and V1 to V4. You go back to those and think about how would you show evidence of that? So within it, that means that it's gonna be a rich and detailed piece of work. Other than that, that's the places to start. Uh, the ARENA team have got plenty of uh, extra advice for you. So make sure that you go and you sign up to their sessions. Uh, they'll have additional advice. They'll go into more detail about it. Please reach out to me if you wanna talk about anything at all. And I wish you all the very best of luck with your upcoming application.